Hey everyone, welcome to this week's special series on the coronavirus. Uh, this week, we actually have the RNA polymerase structure, and we have Daniel and Rob joining us to talk a little bit about its function and how uh, different small molecules uh, might actually work with this protein structure in order to inhibit the RNA activities. So we're going to talk about a few drugs on market and then also talk about the idea of having you know, new drugs that are more specialized towards this coronavirus RNA polymerase. Yeah, and I, so before we jump into the drugs, I wanted to mention that um, for those of you who aren't familiar with what an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase is, this is an essential piece of um, an RNA virus's um, replication machinery. Basically, any virus that uses RNA instead of DNA as its genetic material needs to have um, an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase in order for it to replicate itself inside of human cells. So this is a super important uh, drug target for for RNA viruses like COVID, like SARS-CoV-2. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, almost a third of the targets are the RNA polymerases, you know, for, for antiviral uh, drugs. And so this is our, our main active site here. Do you guys just want to share a little bit more about what's going on? Yeah, we can see here the RNA uh, primer in cyan color, which is a short RNA strand here. And then in dark blue, we have the RNA template. So what's happening here is that the remdesivir, which we have, I'm pointing to it right here, is covalently bound to the primer RNA strand right here. And there's a couple of uh, magnesium atoms here coordinating uh, the active site and then also there's a few uh, residues here interacting in the active site as well it's a serine and, and two aspartic acids uh, in a row you could call that a catalytic triad i guess so to clarify for um, any audiences who aren't as familiar uh, daniel this rna uh, template is what the virus is supplying right and then the primer is what's being uh, manufactured on top of the template. Correct, right. and remdesivir actually binding here, what does is it terminates the chain elongation, meaning that there's no more uh, replication of RNA, meaning there's no more viral replication. That's Whoa. pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that paper solved the both structures, you know, the one in the APO, uh, <clears throat> APO complex, which doesn't include the remdesivir or the RNA, it's just the protein target only. But the one we have here includes the remdesivir molecule bound to the RNA. So that's the one we are looking at is more um, interesting. So our, we have our RNA structure, uh, which has been color coded um, by each base pair that we have in gray, purple, um, this sort of salmon color and this orange. Um, and we see that we have our RNA coming in and interacting with our protease over here. So if we you know, look at this active site, you know, we're really trying to understand how the protein works, um, you know, how it's coming in, and looking at remdesivir, we can see that there's a lot of similarities of remdesivir with the RNA base pairs. Um, however, it does not allow replication of more RNA. Yeah, exactly. Uh, remdesivir, it's a, a nucleotide analog. That's meaning that it has a very similar shape than the nucleotides. And so it's covalently bound here to the RNA primer. And uh, what happens is that it, it's a chain terminator, meaning that there's no possibility of other nucleotides uh, incorporating into the chain. That's because it lacks a three prime hydroxyl group uh, up here that would allow that such a and, and so it, it really is binding on to the end of this RNA over here. Over here, and, yes. And, yeah, and, and, and it's at the terminal. And so then when this RNA goes in and it binds, um, you know, so we have this you know, RNA sort of coming in. It binds this, this nice site in this protein that's kind of specifically designed for it. And then it goes in, and there's supposed to be some functionality happening with these residues that we have highlighted in the light green carbonite coloring. Um, however, it, you know, because this remdesivir is here, it, it's blocking the function, right? Correct, yeah. The more nucleotides would incorporate here to the chain. Uh, however, remdesivir, when it does incorporate, it just blocks uh, elongation, blocks 
prevents uh, more. Nothing else could be attached to it. To it. Exactly, and so exactly. this RNA isn't now. So then uh, when this RNA stops, and let's just say that, you know, maybe after some period of time, this, this pops out of the protein, you know, maybe it gets stuck in there for some period, who knows. Um, but whenever it pops out and then another protein picks it up to try to, you know, create a protein from it, um, it's not going to be able to read a, a full sequence exactly. so that it, would it be doesn't incomplete. produce any useful proteins. Exactly, yet. yeah. Mm -hmm. It prevents um, further replications and yeah. further viral infection. Yeah. So, so, so this reduces the functionality of proteins to produce more proteins, which at the end of the day, the protein, or sorry, the virus itself is just a collection of a bunch of proteins like we saw the spike in earlier episodes. Uh -huh. um, and this one, you know, this protein that we have here um, in the ribbon right now, this is the uh, RNA polymerase. Correct. Yeah, and so you know, if you only had half of this, then it wouldn't work how it does. So, you know, really important to inhibit the reproduction of proteins. Correct. Yeah. So we have the three magnesium uh, atoms here that are coordinating the active sites, catalytic active site, I should say. And we see the three residues here that are critical. We have a serine and two aspartic acids over here. So those three are interacting with the magnesium and um, here with the desivir. And yeah, that's the active site. Yeah, okay, great. And yeah, just wanted to yeah, reference uh, the paper that you found, uh, the CN 2020 paper. And so yeah. uh, really quick, we'll just do a uh, comparison of the other uh, structure that we have here. And so, uh, you yeah, these are the same structures uh, that you see in the paper. Uh, we've just sort of colored them a bit differently. There's some other parts of the protein structure uh, that aren't available um, that you don't see because in between the orange and the red, like this whole region here would be where the RNA is actually coming in and binding. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Channel, that's what we call the channel. And this has a shape like a hand also. We have the thumb, the palm, and the fingers. Here, uh, there you can see two zinc atoms that are stabilizing the structure's architecture of this uh, RNA polymerase. You can see labeled here the relevant amino acids that are interacting with them. So they're very important to hold the whole protein together. You know? the, the protein wouldn't work the same without those zinc atoms. So those are very important on top of the magnesium atoms that we saw on the catalytic active, active site. So remdesivir was developed originally for uh, Ebola virus and also uh, Marburg virus. And I think it's been also tested for HIV virus. And the reason for that is, there, is because they're all RNA virus, just like this coronavirus as well. And that's the reason it's been tested in uh, this late, last outbreak. And it appears to be working uh, pretty good. You had a few other uh, structures. So we have Favipinavir, uh, Galadesivir, and uh, Ribavirin. So yeah, those are also being tested for RNA virus as well. This one is actually approved in Japan for uh, the flu. This uh, Favipinavir. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of people talk about like universal antivirals. Um, it seems like this uh, RNA interference is like a pretty good mechanism that might be a cross species uh, sort of yeah. antiviral. Absolutely. Yeah. And so this one's just like a really small like nucleotide analog. Uh, do we have any idea like how something like this works? Not really, but it's really stunning how just a very small one ring the molecule would block the, the replication of the RNA, yeah? It's really amazing. Yeah. And of course, it's important that it, o it only messes with the viral RNA, not with our human RNA. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just so interesting uh, to just look at the structure and like, you know, how small it is and you know, how much of an impact every uh, atom of this small number of atoms actually has. So we have a galadesivir. So this galadesivir, it seems like galadesivir and remdesivir have a little bit of overlap in terms of their structure. Yeah, they're both analogs of uh, adenosine. Yep. And we can see here the, the structure. Yeah, well, we can, see, the... we can see a few variations, right? Because we have yeah. nitrogens, right? But then this group uh, right in the middle there, this one and that one. 
yeah, yeah, except yeah, yeah, nitrogen yeah. to carbon, and then over here, you know, we end up for the that aromatic ring, um, you know, having the nitrogen over there. Important thing to note as well is both all of these structures, as mentioned earlier, they just lack the three prime three hydroxyl group, and that's extremely important because that's exactly what makes uh, the you know the polymerase unable to keep uh, incorporating more and more nucleotides to the chain so that terminates the rna replication that's extremely important so a really important part of all this drugs is that it doesn't contain um, the ability to keep adding more onto the chain right exactly the three prime hydroxyl group that's critical to incorporating more and more nucleotides in an rna strand the remdesivir and all these drugs, they just lack that hydro hydroxyl group, meaning that there's no other possibility for incorporation. So it just stops. It's called the chain uh, termination. So in terms of um, you know, potentials for uh, the design of like new uh, RNA polymerase inhibitors, like there, there's a few things going on because at one point, uh, the remdesivir is bound into that pocket that we're looking at, and that's the site where it attaches to the RNA. Mm -hmm. Correct. And and so there's a little bit of like a shape fitting bit that we're like we need it to be like kind of waiting in the pocket there, ready so that when the RNA comes, uh, it's able to form this interaction that's mediated by these magne magnesiums and these phosphates. Yeah, shape it definitely plays an important role there. Yeah. The, whole, the whole reason it actually works very well is because it has a very similar shape to these nucleotides. Um, so, well, if we were to design a new one, then uh, you know, it's not so simple. Um, you know, in structure-based drug design, in the context of like inhibitors binding to the pocket, you know, isn't really that simple. Um, but we cannot just like shape mask and try to get a tight binder here. Um, there has to be some analogous properties that make it, you know, kind of look like a nucleotide in, in some aspects. All right, and, and so w with each of these, uh, you know, potential drug candidates for treating COVID-19 patients and trying to interfere with the SARS-CoV-2 uh, RNA polymerase, we're looking at the favipiravir, um, which has been approved for influenza. And this one does not contain the sugar portion. Um, like the other ones do. We have the ribavarin, uh, which contains both this basic portion and this uh, you know, sugar portion. And then we have the galadesivir, oops, uh, where the galadesivir um, has a very similar portion over here to remdesivir, um, but like a different uh, sugar portion. And then we have the remdesivir, which has that basic portion, you know, pretty uh, overlapping in terms of how those two interact. And uh, then we have a different portion. And we, we just twisted that around. Um, so all the interactions here are gonna be relatively loose in terms of how that conforms. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, I think that that has been uh, pretty informative, just you know how this particular protein structure here with that nice big uh, channel for RNA, uh, this protein, which is the uh, RNA polymerase of the SARS-CoV-2. So um, yeah, looking at this protein structure, understanding a little bit more about how exactly it works with RNA and how drugs like remdesivir and other drugs that inhibit RNA replication, um, replication exactly, uh, will you know, potentially interact. And you know, thanks everybody for tuning in if you're interested in helping out. Nanom is working on multiple projects, researchers around the world. Uh, if you have ideas for RNA polymerase uh, inhibitors, uh, if you have ideas for um, you know spike protein inhibitors, small molecule, large molecule, um, yeah, we're here to help, and we're actually supporting the community of researchers around the world. Um, so reach out to us, hello at nanom.ai, and we are happy to help with your research for coronavirus and COVID-19. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Thank cool. you. Thanks a lot, everyone.